Well, I got to say it. I ignored the Bush pedigree, the TPP connections, the CFR connections, the Goldman Sachs connections. Because I know people that have come out of Goldman Sachs, like Naomi Prims that exposed it. I know people that have been in the CFR, like Steve Pachinik, who resigned from it. I mean, just because you've been in the establishment doesn't mean you're bad overall. But Ted Cruz, who I really liked in the Senate and the work he did, I think he's a very eloquent, smart guy, he's flipped a switch the last few months where, I mean, it's like Bill Clinton's up there on steroids. He's worse than Obama or Hillary. I mean, he goes, I played the clips in the first hour. He said, it's a democracy. I won the vote in Colorado, and Matt Drudge is a... Uh, operative is the quote of Trump and gets his orders from Roger Stone. I well, know for a fact Stone and him aren't even talking. I mean, it's a story when the Republicans start canceling state elections and just have the super delegates ignore the delegates. The delegates are coming out saying they, they were for Trump and, and they were just switched out. Then they had a vote of that. This is the suspension of our election. And they're doing it to Bernie Sanders too, but, but Trump's way ahead of Sanders in his lead, his lead's much bigger over Cruz than Sanders over Hillary, but they're stealing it there too. Both parties are openly merging against the populist movement. And then I played the clip of Cruz on the radio going, yeah, it's crazy. Drudge just you know, does all this horrible stuff. And when I win states like Colorado, he won't even report that I won the votes. And uh, Drudge reported that there weren't votes and said no election, no voters needed. So we've hit a new level. Obama says two plus two equals five. He says you didn't build your business. I mean, I thought that was the top, that Obamacare is free and then you can keep your doctor. I thought it couldn't go any further. And Ted Cruz is like uncloaked. And it's weird when you've liked somebody before, because I never liked Bill Clinton or Hillary. I always disliked them. So now I'm just revile them. And But it's weird that I actually hope Ted Cruz was real. We interviewed him. When he was running for Senate in Texas, didn't mind he was a you know, guy from Canada or whatever. At least he claimed he was conservative. I tried to ignore the Bush connections. And man, I feel like I got chumped. And it's a weird, creepy feeling now. I'm like scared of Ted Cruz. Not like, oh, I'm afraid he's going to get me. I'm like scared for the country. I'm, I feel really betrayed. I feel really dirty. I feel like a failure. I've never felt like this because I've never supported somebody that turned out to be pure evil. I've seen folks make mistakes or not be perfect. I, I'm, I'm completely freaked out right now. And we got open world government being announced, the, the socialist communist pope telling us what to do, Catholic churches saying, you know, and, and schools saying you can't be on Trump golf courses, Drudge being demonized, Phyllis Schlafly, he, he broke it. It's now all over mainstream news, but World Net Daily, WND.com, Dr. Jerome Corsi broke the news. Phyllis Schlafly, my board, plotted to fire me over Trump, tried to take the, the bank accounts, tried to vote with a coup d'etat, even though the rules, the corporation said they couldn't. And she stopped them. The bank stopped them. I and mean, they said, no, you're, this is improper. And now you heard Stone, and Stone wouldn't say this. Everything that guy said has turned out to be accurate. I Matter mean, of him 10 years ago on JFK book, he was writing, didn't realize how big a politico he was, but I knew he had been. But I tell you, he says it's coming out soon. He told us a little bit more, but I'm not allowed to talk about it, that, that, that specifically this is from the campaign that, that they were running the attempted takeover, the oldest true conservative organization in America that is the proto-progenitor of the libertarian Tea Party Republican movement that both the Democrat and Republican establishment hate. Now, we're, we've got Dr. Jerome Corsi, who is really known for banking and business and hostage negotiations. He's also better known by the public, but that's what he really does for, what, two, three, four number one New York Times bestselling uh, books uh, that have game changed two elections at least. And he joins us until 45 after that. I'm going to hit other news. And then uh, we've got a guest host uh, coming on to host things, uh, David Knight, in the fourth hour today. Jerome Corsi, WND.com, Twitter.com forward slash Jerome underscore Corsi, PhD from Harvard University, Political Science 72. Currently senior staff reporter, WorldNetDaily.com, where he works as an investigative reporter. He's also an expert on political violence and terrorism and jihadist. 1981, he received a top secret clearance from the Agency for International Development, where he assisted in providing anti-terrorism training to embassy personnel. 
25 years beginning in 81, of course, she developed and worked with banks throughout the United States and around the world to develop financial services marketing companies to assist banks in establishing broker dealers and insurance subsidiaries to provide financial planning products and services to their retail customers. That's why he knows Donald Trump for 40 plus years. He is a noted financial services speaker. That's where he's the big rock star, folks, is banking and what's happening. Published three books and numerous articles in professional financial services journals and magazines. And he's the guy that last time connected the dots where all these other insiders had told me years ago, no, Trump's a patriot. He knows what's going on. He's a nationalist. What do you think of Donald Trump? And I'm just like, Donald Trump, you know, the real estate guy? And he told us last time, no, Trump knows as much as we do or more, Alex. He's a patriot, a nationalist. It's why they hate him. And clearly they do. This isn't some shell op to make us think they hate him, so we go for him. They're stealing it openly. So do we start with Shaftley? Uh, Phyllis Lapley, an uh, eagle form. Do we start with the big steel? Uh, do we start with the IMF admitting the world's going into a depression? I mean, there's so many time bombs here. The Russians pulled out. Saudi Arabia and the jihadis attacked again. Now, the Russians have had to go back in because Aleppo has got 100,000 ISIS people attacking it. I mean, the world is teetering on the edge, in my view. Dr. Corsi, what do you want to tackle first? I mean, there's just so much. Am I right in saying that we've probably never been in a point in modern times more dangerous on so many fronts? I mean, what would you call the state of the world right now? Oh, I, I agree with you entirely, Alex. I mean, this is a precarious state entirely, not just in politics, but in economics. Uh, the world is closer, I think, to a combination of a new depression, which will make the uh, last depression in the 30s look like a picnic, uh, and a new world war, which will make the last world war look like a picnic. I mean, we're at the collapse of the financial systems. This mountain of debt on social welfare cannot sustain. It's going to collapse. It's starting to collapse in Europe. European banks are going to negative interest rates. The European Union is stretched beyond being efficient. The European Union is breaking apart with refugees. Uh, it's it's a, you know, a complete shambles in terms of the dream of a united Europe. Um, I think in the... Middle East, we're closer to war, uh, nuclear war, than we've ever been. I now envision nuclear war, including in the next 20 years within the Middle East, uh, starting a regional nuclear war. I think Iran is pushing towards a uh, nuclear weapon. I would not be surprised to see Israel calculating a preemptive attack on, um, uh, on Iran, uh, perhaps even before the election. I mean, this is, I think, the most critical time in world history, and we're on the verge of a major financial collapse and a World War III event, and the globalists would be happy. I mean, you know, kill five, six billion people. They're not going to miss them. That's the problem. I've been interviewing you for probably 14 years, and you've never talked uh, like this this grave. And other, even mainline analysts are saying, hit the panic button. And then the politicians, not just here, but all over the Western world, act like they don't care, bring in 5 million, mainly jihadis, put sleeper cells in, fly them in and don't check their IDs. Donald Trump says we should stop this till we check them. There's a war on common sense. What's happening? Because I always thought the leftists were run by big, you know, uh, combines, which they are, and that they didn't believe their ideology, that it was just a way to hamstring young people and turn them into jellyfish and dependents. But now I go back to what you would say 14 years ago or others, no, Alex, they really believe it. They really want to take over and screw everything up to build their utopia. And so now I realize we really have power-mad pseudo-communists run by weirdo war criminals like George Soros going completely insane. I, I mean, it, it's crazy. I don't think they even know what they're doing now. It's just They just hate freedom, hate free market, hate Christians, hate America, and just want to screw everything up. I mean, what do we do? Well, I mean, for the left and the right, I, I think we're right back to where we were in the 1930s, that the, the communists want to have state control. They want to have state control of all private property, but they want social welfare system. They want a totalitarian government. Uh, I've said for the beginning that the Nazis, which in a sense, I think we've adopted the fascist ideology, we've become state controlled business, but also with a strong social welfare system. Uh, you make a mistake to think that the left and the right don't agree on government spending. Uh, Paul Ryan uh, would be happy to spend the United States into oblivion. He's not going to stop spending in social welfare. He doesn't want small government. 
And um, we're seeing the difference, I think, from the 30s is in the, the 30s, the United States was a you know, more of a capitalist country. We had more individual freedom, and we still had a God-fearing society. We, we were still, less domesticated. And today that's gone. We've lost a lot of the religious basis of America. This is what's so tragic about Phyllis Schlafly. And um, the political parties are acting as if they're completely an elite who have the right to control everything. I mean, the GOP and the Democrats alike are saying, you know, this would be a good party, a good political party, the GOP or the Democratic Party, except for the voters. That's the one they, they, they can't stand voters. Do they really believe their spin that they count and voters don't and they're really drinking their own Kool-Aid? Because are we seeing true megalomania here, Dr. Corsi? Yes, they really believe it. They believe that they know the best for everybody. Carl Rove and Paul Ryan and the few who are making millions in Washington, you know, the gravy train of the consultants and the uh, all the special interests don't want to give up their power, don't want to give up their money, either in the GOP or in the Democratic Party. There's a fundamental agreement in Washington, keep the power in Washington, and the rest of the country, forget it, put them on welfare. Uh, if they're not useful, they can be eliminated in the next global war, it doesn't matter. Got 90 million people in the United States that they, the economy doesn't need anymore to work. What are you gonna do with these 90 million? What when the 90 million get to be 120 million? You know, do you think the GOP or the Democrats have a plan for that? No, they don't. They need a way to deal with the baby boomers. And, and you show your, your sophistication as a top financial analyst for the biggest corporations out there and a guy that's worked in all sorts of, you know, highest level uh, ops. The elite literally look at it like a ballot sheet and look at all these excess people and want to get rid of them. And that's why they're pushing war, famine, and globalism. That's Agenda 21 that you've written books on, been in films on. This is really where they flipped out and believe collapse and austerity and war is going to cleanse the earth. And it's really just an excuse for them to have total power and control. Right. Well, the globalists never want to eliminate themselves. I mean, that's always the irony of it. But everybody else is worthless to them. There's no fundamental respect for human life or human beings. And, you know, you're seeing right now in the Republican Party, uh, Ted Cruz someday is going to wake up and realize he's just being used. Karl Rove, they have no intention, the GOP establishment, of allowing Ted Cruz to be the candidate. They've got Ryan and Kasich and uh, all of them suiting up. Jeb Bush, the whole bunch of them. I mean, though, they're likely to pick a Jeb Bush, Ryan, or, you know, Run Mitt Romney and Ryan again. They don't really care. The, the GOP does not mind losing the presidency to Hillary Clinton. I've said this repeatedly. They're happy with the Clinton presidency. They're happy with an Obama. We can't president. survive that. <laughs> well, it's, it's, the, it's a nice pact because everybody you know, remains fat and happy in Washington. And the people get told in an election what they want to hear. Tea Party sends conservatives, they think. Washington. Who Won't Hillary go for it all? I mean, that's what the criminology oh, shows. If she gets in, people think she's dangerous now. My God. Oh, I mean, the Clintons are going to take the Clinton Foundation scam to, uh, to you know, to the billion dollar level. They've already had the hundreds of millions. Now they're going to start selling government favors for billions of dollars. I mean, we might as well become like Argentina. We're going to become a banana republic. Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton and the elite will get Rich, they'll fly around their jet airplanes, they'll go to their Lolita Islands, they'll have all their sex affairs, they'll have all the drugs they want, and everybody else will be losing their pension money, uh, struggling desperately to work, not able to afford a house. And here's their problem, though. They think the military and the police don't know now. They're actually woken up big time and aren't going to go along with this while they fly around and jet set while we kill each other in the streets. Well, and the, and the problem is, too, I mean, look at the border. The Border Patrol is already saying this is insane. The Border Patrol is not being permitted to do their job. And, you know, the economic structure is not going to support this. There's, we're already at the point where the social welfare systems, the debt levels in the United States and in Europe and around the world are at such extreme levels that these debt Written societies are going to collapse. Dr. Corsi, I want, when we come back from break, to really focus in on the economy, the IMF. They're all saying what you said five years ago, a month ago. It, it, it's, we're now approaching the big event that Ron Paul and you have talked about. But but shifting gears into Phyllis Schlafly to kind of show up yes, a, 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 you know, a, a zoomed-in micro of what's happening. You heard yes. Stone earlier. In my experience, he doesn't make stuff up. It just keeps coming true. 
He right. says he has the sources. It's confirmed to the highest levels that they attempted to take her organization over that is very influential, very powerful, very successful, with a huge list and a bunch of money, uh, and, and to flip it into Cruz. If, if he has the goods and this comes out, this could be devastating, mugging an old lady. Well, I'll be right. This, I'm going to be working on this all afternoon. It'll be my lead story tomorrow. I'm going to start off with what Roger Stone just said on your program, that it's orchestrated at the highest levels of the Cruz campaign. I mean, there's literally millions of dollars. Um, I'm not even sure how much in the endowments of Ego Forum that this renegade group, all of which have pledged to Cruz, every one of these six women who are in the renegade board group uh, have pledged their support to Cruz. If they can control Ego Forum and depose Phyllis Schlafly, they can change the mission of the society, they can grab all, all the, the money that's there, and I, they're not going to succeed. Phyllis Isn't is this not, a bellwether of the thuggery, the, the, the yes. spirit of theft going on? I'm sorry, go ahead, sir. Well, I don't, you know, that's first, I, I, you know, that's, you're exactly right. I mean, it's, it's appalling to me. I mean, here is a woman who is one of the most respected conservatives in America, who I've known for decades, and who's fundamentally you know, fought to preserve the values of family, uh, God, religion, and our culture to you know have conservative values small government and she has brought these women into politics she's the real feminist yes she truly is because she you know has always championed women but championed women with dignity and respect and honoring you know the the woman's ability to procreate bring children into the world this is these are fundamental values that phyllis has elevated these women were brought into would be nothing if it hadn't been for Phyllis Schlafly. And now even one of them, her daughter, is in this group trying to take over the organization. Um, uh, you know, the, I quoted yesterday, Kathy Adams gave this interview in the Dallas Morning News. She's one of the six board members trying to take over Phyllis Schlafly's organization. And um, basically said that Phyllis supporting Trump was senile. She'd been manipulated. Uh, that she was, I mean, it, it was an absolutely appalling interview for a woman who had, you know, to whom Kathy Adams for 23 years has been head of Eagle Forum, I believe in California, and here she's turned on her, on Phyllis. I mean, it's disgraceful. Uh, Phyllis will not roll over and let this happen. I She's a constitutional lawyer of the, of the highest order. She's got a great group behind her. Uh, I think there should be a serious investigation of this. Well, I think there should too. And I think, you know, again, it's what price pe people are paying to back Trump, even within the GOP. The, you know, anybody who's backing Trump is going to get turned on. Certainly, the academic buddy. I've never had the pressure I've got on me right now. It's it's bad. Right. I mean, they and they're they going to come after anybody who supports Trump to destroy you in the process of, or me to, in the process of you know WND and Joseph Farah and everything else to try to you know promote Cruz. Not so Cruz will win. And this is where the Cruz supporters have to understand they're being used as dupes. The they're Republican leadership is in the news admitting that they're going to not have Cruz. Right. And the rules of the Republican convention are not going to be fair. I think, you know, what Roger Stone is saying with votes being stolen. I mean, how can you basically have a primary in a state like Colorado and no one votes? You know, the GOP is saying... This would be a great party except for the voters. We really don't need the voters. They're a nuisance. And, and Ted Cruz, who should have said, I don't want to win this way. That would have been the honorable thing. He's so desperate to get, what, 30-some. Have you heard the clips where he goes and says, I got the vote, it's a democracy, and Drudge won't say uh, that I won Colorado? Drudge is lying? Well, that's inverted reality. That's like crazy town. And you're seeing now the Ted Cruz, who is the establishment Ted Cruz, who was a product, who was aspiring to be a bushy, wanted to be an insider. He was an insider for years, working Federal Trade Commission. He wasn't liked enough to be given a, a post as prestigious as his wife had in the White House. And when Karl Rove would not give Ted Cruz the blessing to be a nominee for the party, that's when Ted Cruz decided he was going to become an evangelist and embrace the Tea Party. And it's all been fundamentally a lie. It isn't, you know, he was for the 
I, I pointed this out. That's right. He came down to Texas to get his big hat and his cowboy boots and went from being an establishment guy to, I'm the evangelist, I'm the greatest patriot ever, and now he's going back to what he really was. Right, and, and this, is, this all was an act. That's the problem, is all an act. He fundamentally supported the Trans-Pacific Partnership, wrote with Ryan an article on you know, in the Wall Street Journal to give it the fast-track authority. Whereas Trump has never been phony, he's a nationalist, right-wing in some areas, liberal in others, but he's real, and that's why they're scared. Well, and, and Trump is going to have a fundamental voter realignment. You're going to find the people from the Democratic Party who are equally tired of being lied to. I mean, how many years are the African Americans going to vote for Democrats who abuse the African Americans, destroy their families, reduce their economic value? The same way with Hispanics. The Democratic Party is going to exploit everybody's votes. And finally, you're going to see a big crossover of workers across America. Wanting to preserve jobs. That's already happened. He's got double the uh, black votes. Uh, all these Reagan Democrats are coming over blue collar, but they keep saying he can't beat Hillary, but the polls show he will. That's why they're so scared. Dr. Jerome Corsi, WND.com, senior staff writer, investigative journalist, Patriot. We're going to come back, get more into this, more into what it, he says is coming up, and then really, how bad is the economy? What's the next big trigger? Because we're, we're sitting on top a volcano and it's rumbling. There's rock and gravel coming down the side. I mean, it's smoking. Ha, ha, ha.